Welcome everyone, I'm Deronda with Foods 101. Today I'm showing you how to make a classic red velvet cake. Now what you're going to need for the cake is one and a half cups of sugar, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of whole buttermilk, one half cup of unsalted butter, two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, like I'm going to show you right here, your unsweetened cocoa powder. This is the Hershey's brand. You've got two ounces of red food coloring we're going to need or two tablespoons of the red food coloring, one teaspoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of white vinegar, one teaspoon of salt, and two eggs. Now this is for the cake and I'm going to show you how to make the frosting later. What we're going to do first is we're going to cream the sugar and the butter together with an electric mixer. I'm going to start on low speed and once I get the butter incorporated with the sugar a little bit then I'm going to increase my speed to high. you're going to start adding one egg at a time. Okay, now it's time to add the other one. And I'll be back in two minutes to show you what this looks like. This is what it looks like. And as you can see, I've just been scraping down the sides of the bowl. The next thing we want to do is set this off to the side. And in with the buttermilk, we're going to add our two tablespoons of red food coloring. Had to look to see what they were calling it. And with a lovely little whisk, we're going to incorporate this into the buttermilk. That way, when you get ready to put the cake together, it's going to evenly distribute throughout the cake. Now, back in the 1940s, when this cake started to become really popular, really back in the early 30s and 40s, um, they used red cooked beets in this cake. They didn't use the red food coloring. They used red cooked beets that gave it lots of moisture and color to the cake. Small bowl, and we're going to add the baking soda and that vinegar. And it's going to create this little bubbling action. You want to stir it around. This way it'll help dissolve that baking soda when we get ready to add to the cake. And next, into another bowl, we're going to add the flour, all the two and a half cups of flour, and the salt, and with um, a spatula, there's the cocoa powder, we're going to incorporate this really super well. Now, we're going to alternate our dry ingredients with our wet ingredients. Add about half the flour to the butter ingredients with the cocoa and the salt. And then add the buttermilk with the red food coloring. And then back with your mixer, we're going to give this a lovely mixing. I always suggest to start on low and then increase your speed once you get your flour incorporated. And now look how beautiful that color is coming through. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Okay, so let's go on to high speed. Now to this, we're going to add the rest of that flour. And I'm going to go back to low. So the flour won't go flying everywhere. And I'm going to add the rest of that buttermilk and food coloring. And to this, I've got to stop this for one second, I'm going to add the, that baking soda and the vinegar right in like this. And that's going to give it a lot of fabulous flavor. Now, look how lovely and beautiful that is. Oh, yeah. Now, over here, I've got 9-inch cake pans greased and floured. I've got three of them. So I'm going to add two cups of this batter into each Pan. I've got my oven preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and you're going to spread it around until you get it from side to side and then off to a 350 degree oven for the next 25 minutes. My three cakes have baked 
and I'm gonna let them cool here on uh, cooling racks and to make sure they have completed baking you want to stick a toothpick in pull it out if it doesn't have any dough on your toothpick you know you have a completely done cake now if you had a little um, batter that came off on that toothpick you'd leave it in the oven for about another minute or two okay and these only baked 20 minutes I'm gonna let these cool in their pan for about 10 minutes and then I'll be back and I'm gonna show you how I get these out to get your slightly cooled cake out of their nine inch pans we're gonna go around the pan with a plastic knife you see you can get this at a fast food restaurant or just buy them in the grocery store they don't scratch your pans up they're awesome to have make sure you go around the edge give it a little shake kind of loosen up the bottom of it see how I'm doing that now to get it out of its pan you're gonna take the cooling rack put it like this and we're gonna flip it and you should have a perfectly released cake and look how lovely and beautiful that is and make sure they cool completely and next I'm going to show you how to make this cream cheese frosting to make the cream cheese frosting you're going to need three eight ounce packages of your cream cheese any cream cheese will do but I'm using a brand a Philadelphia cream cheese brand which I absolutely love the Philadelphia is my favorite but any kind will do do not use your whipped cream cheese only use your block cream cheese you're going to need two teaspoons of vanilla a half a cup of unsalted butter and two cups of your confectionery sugar or powdered sugar or some of you will know it in the world as icing sugar now let me show you how we're going to whip this together i've been cubing and adding my room temperature cream cheese and butter to a large bowl and with a hand mixer I'm going to beat this for the next five minutes and I'll be back to let you know what it's like. Now, after whipping your cream cheese and your butter for about three to four minutes, it's going to start looking like this. And I'm going to add the two teaspoons of vanilla along with the two cups of powdered sugar. And I just measure it right from the box. That is my powdered sugar. And we're going to whip this together. We're going to start on low and increase our speed until we get these ingredients well incorporated. And oh, yummy is this smelling fantastic. And I can't wait to show you how I'm going to frost this beautiful red velvet cake. Look how lovely and creamy that is. Now it's time to frost the cake. I'm going to serve my cake here on a 12 inch platter. I've got my nine inch cake. I'm going to just add to the center there and I've cut these little squares of um, parchment paper and I'm going to put it along the edge of the cake. You see how you're just going to um, put it under the edge of your cake right there. That way when you're frosting it, you're not going to get your frosting on your lovely serving plate because we're going to remove these once we frost the cake. And I just make them to go all around the cake and if you don't have parchment paper you can use tin foil that'll work too with a regular spoon as I have here I'm just going to go into my frosting bowl I'm going to grab about three-fourths of a cup and spread it to the edge of our cake here Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It has been a long time since I've made a red velvet cake. So I've got that like this. And then for my next layer, I'm going to add my cake. Make sure I have it evenly. Press it down just a little bit. Whoops, and it's getting closer and closer to the camera there. And again, I'm just going to scoop that frosting right on the top. And with my spoon, spread it out to the edge. Now, for my last layer of that cake. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. Just squish it down a little bit. Now, at this point, you're going to start working from the side of the cake and coming up with your icing. For the sides, I just like using a regular knife like this. 
You just want to go all the way down. Don't worry about getting it on your serving plate because we're going to remove those pieces of paper. And you just want to go all the way down and then come up. All the way down and come up like this. Now you may want to put a little bit more on it. You don't want your cake really showing through your frosting. You have to work with it just a little bit and keep turning and adding your frosting until you get all the way around. I'm just going around the entire cake. You can go backwards and forwards with your knife. We're just going to smooth it out. Now this cake you're going to keep refrigerated because of the cream cheese in it once we get it frosted. And that's absolutely looking beautiful. Now for the top, I'm taking the rest of that cream cheese frosting as you can see right there. I'm adding a big dollop onto it and I'm bringing it over to the edges so it connect to the frosting that we brought up from the bottom of the cake and you'll just want to test your skills with it and look how beautiful that's coming along finishing up by adding the rest of our frosting here to the top oh my gosh I can't wait to dig into this oh my gosh it's gonna be so so yummy and as again you can go around the edges cover the little cake that's coming through and you will get so many compliments from this cake everyone absolutely loves it put your own personal design on it Oops, and then I got a little bare spot right there and I love going from the sides and coming into the center as you twirl your plate around until you get this lovely little design on the top and if you want for good measure you can go all the way around and smooth out the sides there it is now at this point you're going to remove these little pieces of paper here on the bottom so it's not going to mess up your plate see how that works and then we're going to just slowly remove this one right here you may want to use your knife to ensure your frosting stays on there but it's a wonderful little trick to keep your plate beautiful and clean once you finish with the frosting on it and looky there that is going to be absolutely fantastic and of course we'll take a little paper towel and clean these little edges off a little bit if you just don't want to lick it off the end of your finger mmm yummy at this point, you're going to want this to go into the refrigerator once you remove all your paper because you don't want your paper to stick to your frosting. And then I'll be back once that frosting firms up a little bit. We'll cut into it. I'll tell you what it tastes like and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. You're going to absolutely love this one. Time for red velvet cake. Now, I've had this in the refrigerator for about two hours. And I'm using a serrated knife. You see the little teeth here on the edge? That'll ensure nice, clean cuts. And then I'm going to go in again. And if you want to wrench your knife in between cuts, that's fine too. Okay, usually I'll just cut across, but I'm just cutting in for a slice. And I'm going to take a cake server. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what this looks like on the inside. Oh my lads, look how beautiful that is. Oh yeah. I'm going to put it over here. Oh my goodness, must I say anything? I'm just dying to bite into it. Oh yeah, uh-huh, looky there. Mmm, oh my goodness. So fresh, moist, mmm, can taste that delicious cream cheese frosting. Hey y'all. This is one winning red velvet cake. You're going to absolutely love it. Woo, thanks for watching. Oh my goodness, that's so deliciously moist. Oh, yummy. And that frosting, yum. 
Hey y'all, give me thumbs up, leave me a comment, and I'll catch you next time.